It is the vice chair who would like to be able to advance SB 598. Uh, this is regarding the Open Financial Statements Commission uh, and preparing financial statements in a machine readable format. Look, this may not be the sexiest issue of the year, but what I would say, uh, it is a really important one uh, to be able to streamline uh, for those who are doing the finances across the state. And I want to say thank you to the vice chair for doing this deep dive uh, on this important issue. Mr. Vice Chair, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess uh, if I were to go back to uh, the movie, um, The Graduate, it's, it's the word is plastics. That's the future, plastics. This is sort of, <laughs> this is sort of the, the future that we're looking at. So I appreciate your uh, assistance and the committee's assistance on this particular bill. IXBRL, uh, inline XBRL, which is an open standard that enables a single document to provide both human readable and structured machine readable data. It's considered one of the most significant additions to the modern accounting process. It's open technology specifically designed to apply computer readable tags and coding to business data, <coughs> excuse me, which would be hidden on printed copies. It's an international standard developed by the nonprofit organization XBRL International Inc. Uh, and it is a worldwide standard. It has been used in Britain for business income tax and financial reporting since April of 2011. The main benefit is that the format is designed to automate the processing of complex accounting information, allowing for easy and stress-free online submission. Conversion software is available and allows for easy importing from accounting systems. Migrating California's municipalities to IXBRL is the goal. SB 598 establishes a committee to review this initiative, determine its feasibility and cost, and provide a workable implementation schedule. IXBRL is already utilized by the Securities and Exchange Commission for its 6,000 publicly traded corporate, corporate quarterly filing requirements and by the FDIC's 8,000 quarterly reporters. XBRL conversion is similar to the evolution of film to digital cameras. It will replace older paper-based PDF reports with more useful, more effective, and more accurate digital versions. Colleagues, IXBRL is being utilized around the globe and is the future for municipal reporting. SB 598 starts the difficult journey of change, which is the big dilemma here. It's like this is a change to a format that will save time and costs, with many saying, why didn't we do this sooner? I respectfully request an I vote and I on SB 598, and I do have witnesses. No, I'm, I'm very grateful. And I just want to check in, Mr. Vice Chair, you're going to be taking the committee amendments, correct? Correct. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, Mr. Morlock, you coming from the position that you did prior to being in the Senate uh, and for all the work you did, uh, there are very few that are working on efficiencies within the internal system. And I just want to say thank you uh, for your intense focus on that. Uh, and we're grateful for your work on SP 598. We'd Thank like to be able to turn it over to our witnesses. Uh, if you could please give us your first and last in your organization, and you have two minutes each. Uh, good morning, Chair. Well, good afternoon, Chair McGuire yeah, and, uh, and members. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts about SB 598. My name is Mark Jaffe, and I'm a senior policy analyst at Reason Foundation. Before becoming a policy analyst, I held a variety of management roles in the field of credit risk information technology at two investment banks and at Moody's Analytics. Six years ago, the State Treasurer's Office commissioned myself and a co-author to study the feasibility of creating a quantitative model for assessing California city credit risk. We were hired in the aftermath of a string of Chapter 9 bankruptcies and bond defaults by cities such as Stockton and San Bernardino. One goal of this investigation was to determine whether the state could create an early warning system for local government fiscal distress. Our clients at CityAC asked us to consider using the state controller's city's annual report data for this purpose. But when I reviewed the data, I found large discrepancies with audited financial statements prepared by the cities. These financial reports, known as CAPRs, are prepared to satisfy municipal bond market disclosure requirements and federal single audit requirements and are published exclusively in PDF format. So rather than use the city's annual report data, we undertook the, da the daunting task of locating CAPRs and hand entering their data into a spreadsheet. It was then that I realized the importance of the reform proposed in SB 598. 
If it was possible to automatically load data from CAFRs into financial models, it would be much easier to effectively monitor local government fiscal health. The sort of mon this sort of monitoring is useful for municipal bond analysis as well as state oversight. In the absence of timely, high-quality financial data, municipal bond investors are compelled to rely on credit rating agencies and or their own biases when assessing credit risk. Academic research finds that rating agencies are harsher in their analysis of municipal credit than of corporate or asset-backed credit. Meanwhile, a trickle of high-profile municipal bankruptcies, such as those in Detroit and Puerto Rico, reinforce largely unfounded fears that most municipalities are not creditworthy, potentially raising the cost of capital for crucial infrastructure projects. So there is no substitute for hard, accurate numbers. Investors in corporate securities have nearly real-time access to issuer financial statement data because the SEC has mandated that annual and quarterly reports be delivered in machine-readable form. No one in the corporate securities market is hand-entering balance sheet and income statement data from PDFs, nor should anyone in the municipal bond market. Returning to the issue of state oversight, much has changed since our 2013 project, but the core problem remains. At the State Controller's Office, the city's annual report has been replaced by the very modern By the Numbers website. State law was also modified to give cities more time to enter their financial data so that completed CAFRs could be consulted during the SCO submission process. Unfortunately, discrepancies between By the Numbers and CAFR data remain. Further, By the Numbers is only available on a delayed basis. State law requires SCO to publish the data 16 months after the end of the fiscal year, but many government financial statements are available within just six months of the end of the fiscal year. SB 598 offers a modern solution to the challenge of monitoring local government health. You have 30 Not seconds. only cities, counties, but various categories of special purpose governments as, as well. It will allow the state auditor, other state agencies, policy researchers, and concerned citizens to more quickly identify at-risk governments, permitting interventions that might prevent the loss of vital community services. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Good afternoon, ma'am. You have two minutes. If you could just introduce yourself and your organization. We appreciate you being in committee today, and thank you for hanging with us all day. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, thank you, Chairman, members of the committee. Um, I'm Michelle Savage. I'm with a nonprofit standards organization called XBRL US, which stands for Extensible Business Reporting Language. Um, we have built and support open data standards, and we have built standards specifically for the Securities and Exchange Commission. We built standards for the Department of Energy for solar financing, and we're working on, on other implementations. We believe that accurate, timely, automated, unambiguous data is necessary. Necessary for governments setting policy, for securities analysts making investments, and for citizens to understand how their tax dollars are being spent. And the one method to ensure the availability of high quality, timely data is standards. Data standards are a long-term solution. They reduce data collection and analysis costs. They increase transparency and accountability from reporting entities and they let governments respond rapidly to change. We support SB 598 because it will help the state of California establish a better data collection and analysis infrastructure, a, a, an infrastructure for the long term. While the benefits of standardization outweigh the costs, we know that cost is a concern, particularly when it comes to government programs. SB 598 calls for the creation of an XBRL taxonomy, which is essentially a digital dictionary of terms. This taxonomy can grow and change over time, but the creation of the taxonomy is a one-time cost. It's an investment. Support and maintenance of the taxonomy can be handled by business managers within the state controller's office. It doesn't require significant IT uh, involvement. And a volunteer XBRL US working group has already been hard at work developing a set of data standards to represent the CAFR, the Consolidated Annual Financial Report. We're happy to contribute this to the, to the cause in California. The XRL standard is named in SB 598 because it has certain characteristics that make it appropriate for this purpose. First, it's widely used. I won't belabor the point because I think that the senator uh, addressed that. It's used by 100 regulators around the world in 60 different countries. Over 10 million companies use the XRL standard. We have 30 seconds. Um, it's a free open standard. There are no licensing uh, costs associated with it. It is software agnostic. It is not software. It's simply a standard that works with many different types of softwares, even ones that, that uh, public agencies are working with today. It's designed to work with financial data. It handles the complexities of financial data, and it adapts to change. It changes with reporting requirements. It changes with technology. It doesn't leave us in a stagnant situation. Government, governments worldwide adopt standards because they work. 
The SEC is adding new rulings every week, bringing in new types of uh, reporting entities to use XBRL. The FDIC, the FDIC program that was mentioned that banks are using has resulted in tremendous efficiencies for the banking system. And finally, there was a program in Australia that requires uh, data standards for government and business in standardized format, and that program is resulting in $1.1 billion in savings every year. I urge you to support SB 598. I think that's a win for California. Thank you so much. Thanks for all your work on this and uh, making it open and available to all as well, which is so important. And I really mean this. Thank you both uh, for being here. I know that both of you are busy, and we apologize that it's been uh, a long day. It's been so. fun. All right. Hey, there it's we go. No, thank you so much. It's very interesting. We'd like to be able to open it up to anyone else who would like to be able to speak in support of the bill. If you could please come forward, state your first and last in organization. Good afternoon. Hi. Yes. Casey O'Connor, legislative director for State Treasurer Fiona Ma. We've offered our office as technical resources to the author's office to going forward, and as one CPA to another treasurer, thanks to the author for bringing this forward. Thank you. Look at that. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, Dixon Wright. Uh, I'm with Surety Resource Connection, and Mr. Chairman, I'm in your district. I live in the North Bay. Wonderful. And I'm in the business community, and we've been working with XBRL, expanding taxonomy for business use, and the transparency will be significantly important. And while not directly in, uh, with municipal bonding, a lot of the projects and the infrastructure will be relying on by the business community for that uh, XBRL reporting. So it is very important to us, and we strongly support your eye. Hey, thank you so much, and thanks for hanging with us as well, sir. All right, let's see if there's anyone else who may be in support of the bill. If you could please come forward this time. Hearing and seeing none, is there anyone who may be opposed to the bill? Can you please come forward? Last call for opposed. All right, let's bring it back to committee to be able to see if we have any questions or comments. We will also gladly accept a motion um, to be able to move this bill. Not all at once, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Senator Wiener or Senator Hurtado. All right, so Senator Wiener is ready to roll. Uh, so we have a motion on the floor. This is a due pass to governmental, organi governmental organization committee. Uh, the amendments will be taken in the governmental organization committee at the appropriate hearing. Senator Morlock, would you like to close on SB 598? Yeah, I'll leave, uh, I'll leave blockchain to Senator Hertzberg. All right, hey, there we go. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, the uh, securities industry went through a similar conversion many years ago. It was called Edgar. And so, you know, the community's available or has already experienced some improvements with, with technological opportunities for their information. It's, a, it's like a tag. It's, it's a search capability. So if you wanted to start doing some research, you know, you can start keying in keywords, and boom, those 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 uh, numbers will come up for you, as opposed to flipping through page by page on a PDF on your computer screen. What's also nice is that you enter the data once, and then that data can propagate all other forms. So that's why the country of Australia is already saving a billion dollars a year. There's just so much efficiency in this opportunity. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank the state treasurer Fiona. <clears throat> excuse me, Fiona. I'm gonna look at that. <coughs> Fiona Ma. Excuse me. Still fighting some allergy or something, Mr. Um, she has uh, my good friend Tim Schaefer on, on, on staff, and he's been a real uh, enthusiastic supporter as well, and that's why we want to definitely have a treasurer on our committee. I think the credit rating agencies will be really excited. Uh, I know the, interna the, not the, the national community, the bond buyer community is already looking at California, and they're excited about this bill. And uh, with that, we're kind of enthused, and we want to move forward, and we thank you for your leadership and Jonathan's great work, and we respectfully request an I vote. Thank you so much. Uh, very grateful. Senator Morlock, absolutely. Mr. Peterson is uh, fantastic and grateful that he's on board. We have a motion by Senator Wiener. This is a due pass to governmental organization. Amendments will be taken in the appropriate committee, government organization, uh, at the next available hearing when this bill is up. Ms. Lanchester, roll call, please. McGuire. Aye. McGuire, aye. Morlock. Aye. Morlock, aye. Bell. Hertzberg. Aye. Hertzberg, aye. Hurtado. Aye. Hurtado, aye. Nielsen. Wiener? Aye. Wiener, aye. 5-0. Five, 5-0. This bill is still on hold. We're going to keep this open and add members on at the appropriate time.